I'm a lot like you in that I have watched just as many videos as you have trying to learn how to get stronger, how to get bigger, how to do both. And the information always seems contradictory. The truth of the matter is it is not complicated to build a base of muscle and strength. Well, you don't need to buy someone's ebook, buy their supplements, pay for their coaching. I say that because I know exactly what goes into making a good program, not only for myself, but for the people that I work with. I'm committed to giving this information away, all the self-coaching guys that I make, all the programming videos, because I believe in you, and I believe that you are capable of getting a lot more jacked and a lot stronger than you realize. So if you're committed to not being an eternal consumer, if you're committed to getting the kind of results that you're looking for, follow along with me. We're gonna go through absolutely everything that you need to put on an exceptional amount of size or strength or whatever you want to achieve in the gym. The needs versus wants analysis is the cornerstone of everything. And if I could sum it up very simply, it's like the phrase, how's the old saying go? Uh, the fellow that chases two hairs catches neither. It's exactly what you're preventing with the needs versus wants analysis. It stops you from including in your training program too many things that have nothing to do with your goal. So first and foremost, set your freaking goal. What is the goal? We want to get jacked and stacked as quickly as possible. Your needs are going to be your muscular weaknesses. Look at your physique, your strength, what aspects of either are lagging behind. You have to be honest with yourself about that. For me, I'm in an arm specialization phase right now. I have three freaking arm days, bro, and I feel like my arms are mutating every time I freaking train. I'm also training the heck out of my calves as well. For you, that might be back. For you, that might be legs. Your weaknesses, your needs have to be addressed first, and that is how you're going to fill up your training program first. Now, if you're looking for a resource in terms of how to structure that, watch this video here. I made that video already. The wants have to come after the needs. So after you fill up all of your training with your needs, then you have some of your wants. Now, what do we want as lifters? We want, a, we want everything is what I'm saying, all jokes aside. You have to curtail these wants. Start with one at a time. And you have to ask yourself, does what I want conflict with what I need? If that's the case, then you need to can it or you need to reassess why you're training in the first place. Are you trying to get jacked or are you just trying to work out? If it doesn't conflict, just add one at a time. See how it does with your training. See if it takes away from your needs after you try it a little bit. See if you can recover from it. If it all works fine, that can become a staple of your training program. And then if you have another thing that you want to do, then you add that second one into your training. All right, so once you figure out what you need to do, you need to figure out the standard that you're gonna uphold yourself to while you do it, and that's rep quality. Rep quality is the foundation that you use to build upon your progressive overload. So that's, you, you either add reps, sets, weight, or density. It's four different ways you can do it. Rep quality is a sliding scale. And to talk about rep quality, we're gonna talk about the three major types of people that you're gonna encounter in life. You got the can't get rights, you got the people that are cool, and then you got the tryhards. Now what that means specifically with rep quality, you don't wanna skip your eccentrics, you don't want to bounce weight off your chest, you don't want to cut range of motion a whole bunch every rep, you don't want to use an incomplete range of motion, that's the can't get right. The try hard is the fellow that worries too much about the squeeze, the time under tension, the 50 second eccentric, the 50 second pause, and then they never add any reps, they never add any weight, and then they're just stuck with baby weight, baby muscles their entire life. You wanna be a cool catch, you wanna be in the middle, you wanna use a controlled eccentric, and you wanna use just enough of a pause if it's applicable, you wanna use a full range of motion. You can deviate a little bit from that, so you know, with squats, that's like thereabouts parallel, so either a little bit below, right at, or just slightly above parallel. To be honest with you, that little bit of range of motion on average, provided that your reps mostly look the same, doesn't matter. ATG is the best, but not every rep needs to be ATG. Much the same, not every pause on your bench needs to be super paused. Not every eccentric needs to have the same level of control. You wanna make sure that you're within a standard of rep quality so that you can make sure that the reps that you add, the sets that you add, the weight that you add, and then the density, you know, more weight and less, or more work and less time is of quality. Now, after you figure out rep quality, 
you're gonna to wanna to start to think about how you organize your training specifically. I have a tiering system. Again, I talk about that in this video right here. It's very simple. Your heaviest motions are gonna be your tier one exercises. Your squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, row, pull up. They're at the bottom. Because they're the heaviest, they give you the most tonnage per set. And also because they're the most accessible. They're what is gonna be the base of your program. The progression model that you use for this is super simple. I have a resource for dynamic double progression in the description. It is the progression model for people that don't want to think about their training. They're looking for something that regulates itself, that ensures you're doing the right weight, the right reps, and the right sets at the right time. It's foolproof. Please, after you watch this video, check that video out. It's gonna allow you to apply what we're talking about here. Now, in terms of importance with your training programming, People talk as if the tier one motions are the most important thing or the only thing to getting jacked. They're literally just a portion of your pyramid. When you neglect your tier two, three, and four exercises, you, get, you neglect aspects of your physique and your strength that are insurmountable. You cannot do without these exercises, period, no debate. And a lot of folks don't find that they get the gains that they want because they ignore them. It's just food for thought. Next up is gonna be the tier two and three exercises. I'm grouping them together because although they are on different tiers, they're of a similar vein, meaning they're both main assistance exercises. The only difference is one is medium, what is light. What I mean by that is, say for example, if you pick bench press as your tier one exercise, your tier two is gonna be something like a weighted dip, a floor press, something like that. Your tier three is gonna be something like pec flies, uh, JM press, anything like that that is a compound exercise or in some cases even an isolation exercise that works on the muscles that you are looking to target in your tier one movement. Now, in general, you wanna make sure when possible that these exercises are supersetable with something else in your program, not only to save on time, but honestly just to make your training more fun. Now specifically, I like supersetting them mostly with tier four exercises, which, which is what we'll talk about in a second. But I wanna to get to the progression on the tier two and three exercises first. Again, it's exactly the same because they're of a similar vein, they're similar exercises. I like using a rep goal system. I got this from the big hairy ugly dude years ago. Very simple, you give yourself a rep goal of like 30, 40, and then you say three sets for each. I like using a lower rep goal on the medium exercise, so the tier two, and then a higher rep goal on the lighter exercise, so the tier three. Just because in general, what you'll find is as you move up in this pyramid, these movements are gonna be getting like lighter anyway. You're going from bench press to curls all the way up at tier four, and you're not, well, if you're looking to get more jacked, you're not gonna be one rep max in curls. You're not gonna be doing doubles and triples with curls. You're gonna naturally move up in reps. So as a consequence of that, your rep goal would move up. Your rep goal is just gonna be something that you're looking to aspire to each session. So if you have a rep goal of 40, that just means that if your first session you did 32, you're going to be aiming for 40 next session. And the closer you get to it is gonna be what drives your hypertrophy. So you do 32, 35, 37, and then finally 40. And once you get to 40, you add a little bit of weight and then you do it over again. It's super simple. It's even more simple than dynamic double progression, honestly. And the only reason why you don't do it or I don't favor it for these tier one motions is that the intensity can creep up on you with this. That doesn't really favor motions where you can use a ton of weight and cause a ton of damage to your body at once systemically and muscular wise, tendons, joints, ligaments. I find that something more measured like dynamic double progression works a little bit better. All right, last but certainly not least, which we'll get into in a second, is your tier four exercises. They're at the top and ironically where, you know, your tier one exercises are low key, your low hanging fruit, people often neglect tier four exercises and I have done that myself. Tier four exercises ice your cake, they round you off, they bring up muscle groups that don't get really worked down here, really at all, or preferentially. They're your tricep rope pushdowns, your cable curls, your strict curls, 
your hammer curls, your abs, things like that that you need to develop to have a complete physique or complete performance. Progression wise, I call it Oonga Boonga. It's very caveman. You're just looking to add reps at any cost, you know, adhering to your rep quality. I just mean that like you're really trying to get these reps and that's the only way that you need to think about these movements. You're going to be able to do that. You're going to be able to eke out an extra rep and that is great progression for something like an ab exercise or a tricep rope push now. That might not be as substantial at the bottom of the pyramid where you know you should be looking to add multiple reps each time. But again, effort is the most important thing here. You're gonna make sure that you're training to failure often with these because they're easy to recover from and they give you so much better of a stimulus if you do that. Now, in terms of how I like to make tier four exercises flow with everything else, like we talked about with tier two and tier three exercises, you wanna make sure that they're super settable when applicable, starting with tier two. To include super setting a tier four exercise with tier four. Now what that means is that like, for example, if you do a press here and then a pull here or a press and then something like dips, you're gonna superset those dips with abs or you're gonna superset that pull with triceps or something. Something else in your tier four to where you're not in the gym for three hours at a time because you're getting all this work in less time. All right, fellas, using myself as an example, we're gonna use everything that we just talked about, apply it to myself, and then I'll leave y'all guys with two separate templates, one strength oriented, one size oriented, and then I'll let y'all go. The Gaines Goblin's about to come home. My fiance is almost here, they keep texting me, so we gotta make this quick. I start off with my camber bar bench. That's a tier one exercise. I just pretty much treat that as its own individual thing. I don't superset it with anything. But then after that, it's superset city. So I go right into a machine rear delt fly. I'll usually rest just to give my pecs a little bit of extra rest, but my second set onwards, I'm supersetting that with a hammer strength chest press. That's just to give the push and the pull action. I then go into upright rows, which are a tier three exercise superset it with face pulls, which are a tier four exercise. Cable curls, push downs is my next weapon of choice. I love feeding the arms. Those are both tier four exercises. And then I finish things off on this day with overhead extensions and then pinwheel curls as my tier four superset. Super simple guys, this workout is a lot of fun. I get to do a lot of arm work in a very short amount of time. I'm in and out of the gym, you know, if I can get to the equipment and everything. There's not a lot of people at the gym in like an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half. That's usually how long my personal training sessions are. You know, it takes me at most two hours if I'm doing a really grueling leg day and I'm taking a little extra rest so I can move a little bit more weight. But this will get you in and out of the gym. You'll get in a ton of work. Like I said, free templates in the description. They've been on Patreon for quite some time now, about two, three months. Again, one is general strength oriented, one is pure size oriented. I'm gonna leave those in the description for you guys. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, please let me know. Please let me know if there's any comments that you have about the Broly drawing. Who's better, Z Broly or uh, Super Broly? I personally think the Z Broly has better drip um, and Super Broly is more of a Chad because he has the scars and everything like that. And he also freaking, was beating up Gogeta and Go, uh, Goku and Vegeta at the same time. Anyway, weave stuff aside. Check the description for the free programs. Let me know how we did. I'll see y'all later. Peace.